The adoption of electric vehicles is a significant transformation in our energy and transportation systems, comparable to the impact of the iPhone on consumer electronics. Progress in both areas is accelerating in the United States, but there is still a long way to go. General Motors' recent announcement of joining Ford in providing access to Tesla's supercharger network for their customers is a potentially important step forward. However, electric vehicles currently account for only about 1% of all vehicles in the U.S., according to the Energy Department. This highlights the enormous challenges that lie ahead. The Biden administration has set forth an ambitious agenda, including aggressive targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions from vehicle fleets. Essentially, this means setting average fuel efficiency goals for all vehicles sold by an automaker. The administration predicts that, by 2032, two out of every three personal vehicles sold would be electric, if these new rules are implemented. The most common concern raised by customers of EVs was the real-world range of these vehicles. According to a recent paper, the Environmental Protection Agency's testing of electric vehicles can yield results that differ significantly from the vehicle's actual range under real-world driving conditions. In fairness, the EPA is not entirely to blame for this discrepancy. Various factors such as speed and changes in elevation can significantly affect a vehicle's energy consumption. In certain situations, such as stop-and-go driving in a city, an EV can exceed its rated range. On the other hand, very cold weather can lead to a substantial drop in range, up to 30% according to another recent study. As electric vehicles, including pickup trucks, become more prevalent, this issue becomes more complex. These vehicles are typically not aerodynamic, and using them for towing and other truck-related activities can greatly reduce their range compared to the EPA estimate. Automakers will likely need to focus on making these vehicles lighter and more efficient since even the most advanced next-generation batteries have limits to the amount of energy they can store. Unfortunately, most drivers only learn about these range variations after gaining significant experience with an EV. This unnecessary, range anxiety, could be alleviated if automakers were clearer about the potential for mileage variations and provided simple steps that drivers can take to maximize their vehicle's range. One effective method, as noted by several customers, is to drive at 60 miles per hour instead of 75. Numerous readers, particularly Tesla owners who benefit from the extensive fast charging network provided by the company, emphasize the amateur nature of relying solely on slower, publicly available chargers during road trips, similar to my experience on a 1,000-mile journey. Some people pointed out that they primarily charge their EVs at home, rendering charging concerns irrelevant for them. While these perspectives are valid, they fail to acknowledge that not everyone will purchase a Tesla vehicle. The recent partnerships between Tesla, Ford, and GM aim to address this challenge by granting customers of the two Detroit automakers access to a significant portion of Tesla's fast charging network, known as superchargers, starting in 2024. This collaboration will approximately double the number of public fast chargers accessible to Ford and GM vehicle owners, according to Energy Department data. Furthermore, the assumption that all EV buyers can install their own charging stations at home overlooks the reality for those without garages or nearby street parking. Despite the increasing availability of fast chargers in the United States, the convenience of uninterrupted long-distance travel or longer commutes diminishes when parking lots, hotels, and restaurants lack charging stations. To address these challenges, the Biden administration has allocated $7.5 billion to expand the number of chargers in the country, with a goal of having stations approximately every 50 miles along U.S. highways. Some state governments, particularly in the West, express skepticism about the feasibility of this target. However, private enterprises recognize the potential profitability of catering to drivers who spend 20 minutes to an hour recharging by offering additional services such as food options. For instance, General Motors and Pilot announced a partnership to add 2,000 fast charging stalls to 500 Pilot and Flying J stops across the United States. 
Despite these efforts, there remains a shortage of chargers in locations where people frequently stop for extended periods. Approximately $1.25 billion of the U.S. government's funding for charging infrastructure is specifically dedicated to bringing charging stations to urban and rural communities, downtown areas, and local neighborhoods, rather than focusing solely on long-distance transportation corridors like highways. You might wonder how it's possible for my iPhone to connect to an Android system in the vehicle. The answer is that cars have essentially become computers, or more accurately, smartphones on wheels. This means that the different computer systems in our vehicles have become a battleground for Apple, Google, and the automakers themselves. Similar to how PCs use Windows, Macs use Mac OS, and iPhones and Android phones use iOS and Android, the large displays in new EVs require their own operating systems. These systems are typically separate from critical car systems that must never fail, such as the drive-by-wire system that connects the steering wheel to the wheels. However, they are no less important in certain aspects. For example, Porsche recently announced its utilization of new features in Apple CarPlay to assist drivers in trip planning and finding available chargers using Apple Maps. The aim is to minimize charging time while ensuring the vehicle never runs out of power. As Tesla has demonstrated, a car can gain new capabilities through software updates, much like our phones. However, this also introduces new security vulnerabilities and exposes the fact that many traditional automakers are not well equipped to develop software for vehicles, according to Mohit Sharma, a research analyst studying the automotive industry at CounterPoint Research. With all this complexity and automakers' desire to control and monetize the data produced by our vehicles, choosing an EV now involves considering the software it runs as much as its on-road capabilities. While over 90% of new vehicles sold in the US in 2022 supported both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for seamless phone and vehicle integration, this may not always be the case. Tesla and Rivian, for example, do not support either platform, and GM recently announced it will no longer do so in the future. Ultimately, this could mean that when we purchase a car, we are committing to another software ecosystem, which brings new subscriptions, software bugs, compatibility issues, and idiosyncrasies, alongside our existing entanglements with smartphones, wearables, and computers. Topping up with an electric vehicle, EV, at an unfamiliar charging station can often be a tricky endeavor. One of the primary challenges is the lack of standardization across charging networks. Different charging stations may require various charging cards, mobile apps, or payment methods, making it difficult for EV owners to navigate the process seamlessly. Another issue is the need to download specific apps or sign up for accounts with proprietary charging networks. This can be inconvenient, especially when faced with a weak or unreliable internet connection. In some cases, EV owners may have to search for a better signal or even switch to a different network altogether, adding further complexity to the charging experience. Moreover, the availability and accessibility of charging stations can vary widely. While major cities and popular routes often have a sufficient number of charging points, rural areas or less frequented locations may have limited options. This can leave EV owners uncertain about whether they will find a reliable charging station when needed, especially on long trips or in unfamiliar territories. Furthermore, the reliability of charging stations themselves can be inconsistent. Malfunctioning equipment, occupied stations, or compatibility issues with specific EV models can result in frustrating experiences for drivers seeking to top up their vehicles. The rapidly evolving nature of EV technology adds another layer of complexity. As newer models with different charging requirements and capabilities emerge, finding a charging station that suits a specific vehicle's needs can be challenging, particularly at unfamiliar locations. To address these issues, there is a growing need for increased standardization, improved interoperability, and enhanced accessibility in the EV charging infrastructure. Efforts are underway to establish common standards and expand the charging network coverage, making it easier for EV owners to charge their vehicles reliably, regardless of their location or charging network preference.
As the demand for EVs continues to grow and governments invest in expanding the charging infrastructure, we can expect these challenges to be gradually overcome. However, for now, topping up at an unfamiliar charging station can still pose difficulties, highlighting the importance of planning, research, and adaptability for EV owners on their charging journeys.